What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Sword of Convalaria video. Alright guys, my apologies. Been away for a couple days, been doing other content. Uh, it's been very, very busy, but I have been playing, keeping up with things, and I am a level 31 right now. And I do want to talk a little bit about a system that is in the game that has a couple of people confused, and I'm going to go through it thoroughly. And that is going to be the tarot system. Now, you might be wondering what a tarot is if you're brand new, or if you're currently playing, you might not know how it works. So I'm going to break it down for you guys. Now, tarots are going to be right over here. They're going to be the third slot in your gear section, and they're going to give you guys various different effects, stats, passives, skills, etc. that you can use through the game, including stats. All right, and I'm going to go through everything, what kind of tarot there are, how you want to use them, how they work, what the stats look like, etc. Okay, so we're going to go break it down. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to simply go through my actual tarot card inventory right over here. And I actually have a section right here that gives me five unnamed legendary tarot whispers. Okay, so there's going to be series one and series two that we can currently obtain. All right, so I'm going to go through each one of these with you. We're going to go through all of the actual skills and what they do. And we're going to talk a little bit about each one. And then we're going to actually open one up and show you guys how the stats work and how randomized they are and how you can level them up and what you use to do so. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to get tarots and what kind of rarities there are for each one. Okay, so I'm going to open this up here. You guys can see, again, these are going to be legendary tarots. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the rarity. Each one of these tarots can be a different rarity. They can be all the way from common. So let me show you guys an example of that. That, right let's just go to a character so if we go to my character screen if i go to my tarot section on cole for example you're gonna see right here i've got legendary and then i've got myself tarot whispers that are uh, that are a more epic and then i've got myself the common or rare ones i should say and then i've got common ones okay so they, they, they are exactly the same when it comes down to rarity as your characters that's the main thing to know now what's the difference obviously between the, the various different kinds so first thing to note is that you can see here a level one rarity of common versus a level one rarity of rare you can see the stats are increased right not only that but also the detail section provides you additional stats you can get from leveling them up so common gives you one rare gives you two epics give you three and then legendaries give you four all right now again we're going to talk more about each one of these in more detail as we get there all right so want to break that down so the rarities are going to be exactly the same as your characters and it's very important to note that because one rarity uh can you can get one of them in one rarity and get another with the same copy with a different rarity but completely different details which will alter the way you use it and who you give it to all right and that's gonna be very important you're gonna see this very shortly okay all right let's talk about the actual tarot themselves i'm gonna open this up for you guys and you'll see the various kinds so let's go through each one of these so you guys get a general sense of how these work so you get there's the hero fence law source of strength the fool's naivety uh temptation of the devil elegance of the empress uh gibbous moon um uh hope i'm saying that right <laughs> majesty of the emperor uh guidance of the world uh we got rays of the sun desire for temperance redemption of the judgment verdict of justice mercy of the high priest uh march of the chariot silence of the hermit dream of the magician uh tower of the sorry destruction of tower and course of fortune now some of these i don't actually possess so what we're going to do is you can click here and you can see exactly what it does so let's go through each one hereference law first one aoe damage taken is decreased by 20 percent pretty straightforward right not much to that one that's an easy one so whenever someone does an aoe move aoe's area of effect uh you will take 20 percent less damage if you have this on all right source of strength when attacked by a character of the character's counter roll damage is taken decreased by 10 percent when attacking a character of the character's counter roll ignores 15 percent of the target's defense this is an incredibly powerful one and one that i will definitely be sourcing so we're gonna go ahead and confirm this i'm gonna grab one of these because i think this is very strong now what this means essentially for you as a player is when somebody is hitting you and they are stronger uh stronger affinity to you you will take less damage but when you hit them you will ignore 15 percent of their defense if you're the the proper character counter role okay so very very strong one for melee melee dps so the fool's naivety here hp is increased by 10 percent when initiating an active attack if the character's max hp is greater than the targets damage dealt is increased by 10 percent amazing for berserkers and warriors very very strong okay so that one there temptation of the devil this is great for assassins or anyone who is a solo character so for each character defeated in battle gain one stack of the devil Okay, you can see here that stack gives you increased attack, defense up to 30%. This effect cannot be immunized or dispelled. The effect lasts until the end of the battle and cannot be dispelled. So this is going to be a very, very powerful one for any solo mages, rangers, or assassins. Very, very strong. So one of the best ones you can definitely put on your main DPS classes. All right, elegance of the emperor, or emperor, sorry. 
After casting a skill on an ally, converts one debuff on the target into level one buff that lasts for two turns. So great for supports, obviously. Uh, Jibus Moon, at the end of the turn, recover 20% HP if the character is injured. So if injured means if you have below 70% uh, HP, you will get 20% back. Majesty of the Emperor, uh, this is damage increased by 10% when attacking healthy enemies. So this is good for assassins or rangers or anyone who DPS again. But again, this effect only lasts when the opponent has 70% HP or more. Once you use this, and they're below the 70%, this no longer will apply. So keep that in mind. It is a niche item, but a very strong one as well if the enemy has a lot of HP. Guidance of the World. Recover one NRG additionally when not using any active skills in standby. So whenever you're doing nothing, you'll get one NRG back. Pretty straightforward there. Rays of the Sun. When attacking injured enemies, ignore 20% of their defense. So injured enemies are people who have 70% HP or below. So keep that in mind. That's what Rays of the Sun is. This is actually a very, very strong one. And it's a good one for assassins and mages alike or rangers. Again, any DPS really. Uh, Desire for Temperance. At the start of the battle, gains a physical shield equal to 25% of the character's physical attack plus its magic attack. The shield can cannot be dispelled this is amazing for tanks healers you name it anybody who needs any form of survivability this is going to be one of your main ones okay for that shield to pop up uh redemption of the judgment so at the end of the turn dispels two attribute the, uh, buffs from one random enemy within two tiles so if you're facing an enemy who has a lot of buffers and support units this is a fantastic way to strip that this is i find more of a pvp one and i've seen a lot more people use this in pvp because of that reason uh verdict of justice increases crit rate by 15 percent pretty straightforward you want to do more crit this is the one to go with this will guarantee you there's no stipulations it's just a straight crit increase for you right there mercy of the high priest uh priest of sorry increases healing by 15 percent all you hear healers might want to have this one so in my anana for example uses this, this one march of the chariot we saw this gains move one when not using any active skills and standby lasts for two turns so this is great to have if you're not if your character is standing by and doing nothing um kind of sucks on auto i will admit Auto always likes to do something usually. They don't usually stand by ever. So keep that in mind. If you are playing autoplay, this one might not be one to go with. Silence of the Hermit decreases damage taken by 10%. Great for all tanks and healers in case you are suffering from a lot of damage um, damage hits from, you know, rangers, whatever the case may be. If the, if, the, if the stage has a lot of assassins, rangers, and you just need to avoid damage, that one or the physical shield one are both very, very strong, right? The beauty of the Hermit one, though, is it's a permanent buff uh, across the entire stage versus the the shield is only there for the beginning of the battle until it's gone keep that in mind so this one here dream of the magician increases damage dealt by eight percent so this is a flat increase by the way but when you're casting skills for each additional hit on one enemy the damage increases by four percent up to twelve percent this has to be an aoe yeah if you're not doing aoe's you're not getting this bonus by the way so keep that in mind dream of the magician does require aoe damage for this increase if you don't have aoe don't even bother with this one uh disruption of the tower this is a very powerful one in my opinion when it's not the character's turn damage dealt increased by 20 percent. now the reason why this is powerful is especially if you characters have counters so cole uh radawa and and anyone else with a counter that you can think of if they are it's not their turn and they get hit make counter you're doing 20 percent more damage so counter units are fantastic with this and then lastly course of fortune at the start of the turn gain one random buff of the wheel of fortune okay so it's just a random buff so all in all these are going to be very very powerful ones. so i'm going to go ahead and get another one here i'm going to get this crit one okay and i'm going to show you guys how the details work so we're going to go ahead and pull this one now you guys can see right away this detail gave me activated a level 15 i get increased magic defense not very very good for a dps trinket right now if i go back for a second and i look at some of the other ones that i have right let's just go to my character screen Let's go to trinkets. You guys will see here, they all have various different effects, right? Look for this one, for example, desire for temperance. This one gives you physical attack by 77%. Now, if I were to find another one right there, look, this one gives you max HP by 98%. Now, ideally, the max HP one is actually better for tanks because this does provide a shield or healers, but this is great for DPS because you know what? Even my DPS can use the shield and benefit from this physical attack. So let's just say I want to enhance this one. Actually, let's go back. See this one here, max HP by 83%. Let's just, uh, one attack by, uh, let's do this one. You know what? This is brand new. So a level 15, you're going to take advantage of this max HP. So let's go to 15. Okay. And you guys can see here, the, the currency he uses is the tarot essences. Now, if I go to 15 here and I advance this, you're going to see this is going to pop up now, right? Now I have this. Now to get the next ones to reveal themselves, I need level 20 for the next one. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Look at that magic attack by 77 percent by 77 now not not what i wanted because i want this to be physical but now if i want to use this on my mage let's just go to 35 let's see what i get here now 
physical defense by 6%. So this is a bust. I consider this a bust. Now keep in mind, you can only go up to 10 levels above your actual level itself. So I'm level 30. I can only go up to level 40 right now, right? I believe that's how that works. I'm pretty sure. But that, that one there is a bust. So now what I have to do is I have to go back and open up another one and hopefully I can get myself better stats on that. So that's how that works. Now, it's very random and that's what makes a tarot system so RNG and so gotcha-like is you're gonna have to get thousands on thousands to get a perfect one before you're happy with what you have okay so first off they can be purchased secondly they can be uh used to get them in one of the the most farm places you're gonna have to go to anyways is going to be tower of conquest right now if you look at the tower of conquest right over here if you go now to it you'll see that every first time clear pretty much has these after level four i believe i don't think level three possesses any no they do actually level three starts with one Level two, I believe, doesn't give you any. There you go. So level uh, level three, first clear, you're going to start finally getting yourself some tarot. You're going to get yourself some epic ones and some legendary ones. So you get five epics, you get one legendary from the series one. You get yourself a lot more th in the fourth one. You get uh, two there. And it just keeps going up from there, right? There's three. And you're going to see four, most likely, or five. It's going to be probably a jump to five. There's five right there. And then from there, it just continues to be five going forward. Now, the reason why they give you so many of them is because, as I mentioned, you're going to need to farm a lot of them to get the perfect stat you're looking for. So the Tower of Conquest is going to be your best place to gather these. Uh, some of them will probably be viable through the, um, right over here, you guys can see here, the, the Tarot Residuals, right? So this is a place to also get them. And you can farm these to get yourself some epics, but I'm not sure if legendaries drop on these. I believe it's only epics that drop on these ones, but they are different ones you can farm and get your get your random ones there, I think. Let's just double check. Yeah, you can see all of them here, what they all do, right? And you can also collect yourself some tarot essences along the way. So keep that in mind. This is a great place to farm. This is gonna be the place you're gonna be spending a lot of your, your stamina in order to maximize your actual tarot cards, but no place gives you the best amount of legendaries outside of the Tower of Conquest. So make sure you are focusing on this, all right? And just so you guys are aware, you're gonna need a lot of tarot essences. So when you see them, get them wherever you possibly can and get those tarots up. All right, guys, this is Payne. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.